boy! The fairy tale goes on. Ajax, winners away in Madrid, winners away in Turin, and now winners away in London. This is your Champions League review. So Ajax, the prospects, the prodigies, the, the fairy tale story of this season's Champions League and they've added another feather to the cap, uh, another notch on the bedpost you might say and this time Spurs were the victims. They came to the new Tottenham Stadium, new White Hart Lane, whatever you want to call it and they pretty much made it their home. Like you would have really thought that Spurs were the away side, especially in that first half, I would say the first <clears throat> what, half an hour of the game, it was all Ajax. When I say, I don't know what the possession stats were, but if Spurs had any more than 20%, I'll, I would be very, very surprised. Ajax came there and they bossed it. They just passed it around, passed it around, passed it around. And it's something I alluded to back in the podcast that if you try and play Ajax at their game, they will pass it around because they've got that ability the funny thing is though Spurs didn't even try and play Ajax at the game they were just never in the game Potter went with a 5-3-2 five, five, um, that's what you can call it it was more of a 5-1 five, five, I don't know they had a three centre backs they had a two wide man but Wanyama Eriksson yeah, it's more of a 5-2-1-2. Two, two. And they just got overrun in the midfield. That was really the issue in the first half an hour. The three centre-backs, because they, they're playing Tadic as their false nine, Ajax, the three centre-backs really had nothing to do because if Tadic drops deep, which he will, of course he does because he's not a proper number nine, then he's just in the gap between the centre-backs who are not doing anything and uh, midfielders who are a bit further apart. And the Ajax just played between the lines of Spurs, kept getting in behind their midfield, and it was just all too easy. Chance after ch or opening after opening, should I say, as opposed to clear-cut chance. But the goal was coming, and it came. And it was a very well-taken goal. Um, ball put through by Zojcik, and uh, Van Beek, is that his name? Van Beek took the ball, and he kind of fainted to shoot and kind of put Loris on his backside, uh, Van der Beek, sorry, uh, put his Loris a bit on his backside and just slotted it into the far corner. And at that point, you're thinking, this could get messy. Because like I said, it was all Ajax. Spurs, they barely got out of their half. Kicking balls long, defending deep, kicking balls long, defending deep. And I say defending, I use that term very, very loosely because Ajax was so comfortable. There wasn't much going on, much defending going on. Not much tackles, not much interceptions, clearances. It was just last ditch everything. Um, and Pochettino made a, uh, well, he actually made a tactical change first. He, he moved Rose into the midfield, put... Uh, Vertonghen left back, so he went to a 4-4-2 diamond and Spurs started growing into the game. I think he was already planning on making a substitution. It came ahead when um, Vertonghen and Adelbrand collided in the opposition box and from a set piece. And to be honest, Spurs' best chances probably in the game came from set pieces. Um, probably should have done better with a few of them. Um, but them two collided as the keeper came out to clear uh, a cross and Vertonghen in the end had to go off, Sissoko came on and the game changed. Sissoko changed the game and I'm not going to say, you know, it's, it's surprising because I think <clears throat> this season Sissoko has proved his worth to the team, he's proved how important he is to how Pochettino wants to play, how Spurs want to play. Um, when he went, got, got injured in the, which game was it? Was it in the West Ham? It wasn't in the West Ham game. It was the game before the West Ham game. Might could have been Brighton. Yeah, I think it was the Brighton game. Um, he came off injured and people were 
worried because Spurs have already got a few injury issues. Obviously, Kane's out for the whole season. Dyer's been out. Uh, Winks, I think he's probably out for the rest of the season. They've had a few issues around the pitch and he's been an engine room in that midfield. Um, actually, no, I think it was in the Man City game. It was the Man City game where he went off injured. Um, yes, Man City away in the Champions League. Um, and... Yeah, it was for me. It was the real chain turning point in the game, and possibly the turning point in the tie. And the reason why I say that, even though the game ended one nil, I think Spurs and Pochettino have found a way to play against Ajax, which is something that many teams haven't done in the season. The season so far, as I said, they went away to Real Madrid and. Um, and Juve and won. Those were both second legs on the back of either losing the first leg or drawing the first leg. And those teams, Real Madrid and Juve, would have been confident after getting a good result away from home that they can take Ajax back regardless of how good they are and they can uh, they can go through. Spurs are in a different position now. Spurs are 1-0 down. But I think they may have found a way to play against Ajax. Now, unless Ajax go and change, which I'll be very, very surprised because they've played this this way all season in all competitions, um, specifically in the Champions League qualifiers right through the group stages into the semi-finals. So I'm expecting them to play pretty much the same way. Obviously, being at home, they're going to have home advantage. But once Spurs changed to the 4-4-2 and obviously Soko came on, Son as well, he's going to be back for the next leg. They caused Ajax problems. It wasn't anything threatening because I think they were just a bit impotent up front. More was running down, um, you know, alleyways, not really doing much. Deli Ali didn't really have the best of games. Um, he always struggles for me when he has to come deeper because he's very much a, a, a attacking midfielder, support striker, whatever you want to call it. Um, so the closer he was to the box, the the more dangerous he looked. But when they changed that formation, they were able to, to outnumber or at least match Ajax man for man in the midfield. And they gave them opportunities. Granted, Ajax were one nil up. So they had come and got what they wanted, their away goal. From there, they only to play the counter-attack. And they could have scored. Uh, Neres had a shot which came off the, the post late in the game. And you would have thought if that went in, that would have been game and tie, of course, over with two away goals. Um, one thing this Champions League has taught me, though, is never count your chickens. You think someone's out and they, they go through. You think someone's through and they go out. So <clears throat> this tie definitely ain't over. But what we saw today is that, yes, they changed the formation. They grew back into the game. They were able to take control of the game. But without Kane and without Son, they're very much lacking. And... Kane's injuries in the last couple of seasons when he usually does get injured. Son usually steps up. Um, oh, for, for a short period, maybe a month, two maximum, uh, gets the team through it. Kane comes back and, you know, fits, it, fits back seamlessly into the team. Happened again this season. Son got them through against, I think it was uh, Borussia Dortmund and, of course, Man City. Um, but Son was out of his leg and... Lorente didn't have a bad game, but in the Champions League semi-finals, not having a bad game isn't usually enough. You have to have a very good game. He was okay. He was decent. The ball came in. The ball stuck. He linked up. He passed it off. But you need your strikers to get goals. And he, for me, he never looked like he was ever going to score. The delivery left a lot to be desired, but. He's a he's a bit of a one trick pony. Like you have to get a ball in as a cross, and he can attack it. You're not expecting him to turn and shoot outside the box uh, from an angle, beat his man and get a shot away. You're not curl it around a you know a defender. You're not expecting that from him. He's really a target man, and they did target. They did use him as a target man. They went long. I did say uh, Ajax would struggle to cope with him and they did they did struggle to cope with him in the directness of Spurs play. But once he laid it off to whoever, I sorted himself out defensively. 
And any balls that were coming in, either the defenders cleared it because they were poor the balls, or the keeper cleared it because they, they were too close, um, or just good keeping. And Spurs really struggled to create anything serious. They got into a lot of wide positions, Trippier and Danny Rose. Danny Rose had a very good game, I think, or a good game, should I say. Trippier was poor. Again, he, he probably needs a summer very, very quickly. Um, he got into good positions, out, or, or open positions out wide. Wasn't able to put in good deliveries, even from set pieces as well, which he's usually very, very good at. Um, so Spurs, Spurs, they huffed and they puffed and they just could not blow that wall down. down. But Ajax, 1-0. They're delighted, actually. I think, obviously, I think with the, the way they dominated the first 30, they probably would have thought we could have got another. And they hit the post late on, as I said. But 1-0 away from home, I think they'll take that all day long. All day long. Spurs have to go over there and beat them. They have to win. And it's not going to be easy. It's possible, yes. It's not going to be easy. Um, Son coming back is, is very, very important, I think. I personally, I will go with the four at the back again in the second leg. And I will play Son, Mora and Lorente. Lorente as the target man. I think you have to go direct against Ajax. You cannot play through them because without Spurs haven't got those ballers in the middle of the park to play through Ajax. They have to go long, go direct, and have two runners. They had one in Son, but he wasn't very, I'm not sorry, no, in Mora, wasn't very effective. If they can have two off Lorente, he can cause some problems. Uh, maybe a case of dropping Deli Ali and having um and, and having a midfield free of Wanyama, Eriksen, and Sissoko, who will be uh, much that much more fit for the second leg, you'd hope. Um... Advantage Ajax. Definitely advantage Ajax. The, the Champions League finals in their grasp. They can touch it. They can feel it. What, it would have been 20 years? 22 years or so? Since they got to a Champions League finals. They won it, of course, what, in 95, I think it was. So, of course, it could be their year. But, it's only half time. It's only half time. Spurs... They'll be disappointed with today's performance. Disappointed, of course, with the result. Didn't even get a goal. Um, that's two losses at home in a row now. But I think they'll they'll just be happy that it was only one. Because it really could have been more. Pochettino may have found a way to play against them, but goals is the currency. They need to be much more... Uh, threatening when they get in the final third. Much more um, incisive and decisive in the final third if they're going to break through this Ajax team. Advantage Ajax, but it's all to play for in the second leg. Make sure you check out the rest of our videos. Hit the like and subscribe button.